Hey friends, happy Thursday, January the 8th, 2026. Hopefully everybody's had a wonderful Thursday so far and a wonderful week so far as well. In this weather forecast, we're going to be looking at winter storm tracks coming back across the United States and Canada, bringing heavy snow and ice and severe weather as well on the warm side and looking at our temperature trends over the next few weeks as much colder air is expected from the polar vortex down here into the lower 48 once we get past Martin Luther King Day on January 17th. We're going to dive into all the details with deep information here with what you need to know. So make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are less than 300 subscribers away from 144,000. You want to help me get there? If you are not subscribed, make sure to do so. And without further ado, let's get into the forecast. Let's look here at the severe weather outlook for this afternoon and evening brought to you by the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma. There is a thin area here of yellow across poor of eastern Oklahoma, extreme southeast Kansas, southwestern Missouri, and northwest Arkansas, and then around the Fort Smith area up to Joplin. Those areas are in a scattered threat for severe weather. That's a slight risk. And then in the dark green, extending up to the southern tier of the suburbs of Chicago, toward Indianapolis, Paducah, Memphis, Jackson, Mississippi, and Little Rock. Those areas are in the dark green. That's a marginal risk of severe weather, a one out of five on the risk scale. Remember, the higher the number, the more likely severe. So this is more isolated severe weather. Once we move into tomorrow, a more substantial day of severe weather is expected from portions of Louisiana through Mississippi into Alabama, including Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, Huntsville, and Florence back here into the uh, Meridian area, Jackson, Mississippi, Mississippi, Greenville, and Mobile, all the way back here into Baton Rouge, Monroe, and Shreveport, even New Orleans as well. So we got to keep an eye on this in yellow. And then in dark green, extending up toward Nashville, Bowling Green, and even toward Chattanooga, we have to watch out for isolated severe weather on Friday. Friday is the day to watch for some tornadoes, especially in the yellow area. And then as we go into Saturday, again, isolated severe weather from Virginia, the Western Carolinas, and all the way to the Gulf Coast, including Northwest Florida for Saturday, January 10th. So looking here at our first low pressure system making its way into the Midwest, this is a 992 millibar low here this afternoon in eastern Kansas. It will be tracking up to the north and east into northwest Illinois and southwest Wisconsin this evening as a 989 millibar low. This is a lot stronger than what we were just talking about a few days ago. So this system, the first one, has trended stronger, and that's what's given us our severe weather for the next 24, 48 hours. A secondary low will develop a little further south and east there from Friday night into Saturday. This one is going to get a little bit stronger here as well, but is actually expected to be weaker than previously expected. So the first system is expected to be stronger than expected. The second one is trended weaker than expected. So that is just a change of the forecast here of what we have seen over the past couple of model cycles. Now, this is still expected to bring some moisture north out of the Gulf. Where you see the greens, dew points are getting into the 50s and 60s all the way up here into Illinois Valley and parts of the Ohio Valley here this evening. Much richer moisture further south toward the Gulf Coast. And as we go into Friday, we're going to be setting up dew points in the mid-60s down here from Louisiana into Mississippi and Alabama, ripe for severe weather. You need the moisture. You also need the lift. Here's your instability. This is your convective, available potential energy. Whenever you hear CAPE, that's what that is. And this is just energy simply for thunderstorms to develop in here. You can see that energy reaching the central and southern Illinois Valley as we go into this evening and then we start to pinch that off in the Ohio Valley as a second system develops across the southeast. This one will pull a lot of instability further north. The strongest will be near the Gulf Coast around 2,000 joules per kilogram and then Saturday some weak instability up there into the Carolinas. Virginia could offer the threat for severe weather on Saturday as well and we also have wind shear. Wind shear very important for organization of severe weather. You can see the nose of our 500 millibar mid-level jet is nosing its way into the Midwest Ohio Valley. So that's where our strongest storms are going to be. And then as we go into Friday, our secondary low coming out here, this is a positively tilted trough, but you can see there's plenty of wind shear and wind energy to go around to sustain these severe storms once they get going Friday and into Saturday. So let's look at the actual reflectivity of the radar. The blue is the snow, the rain is the green, and it's where you see the yellows and oranges in here. That's where heavier rainfall 
is likely ongoing here right now across Missouri, southern Iowa, and then some severe weather down there into western Arkansas. And then as we go into the afternoon, that cold front is going to continue to shift further east into that warm, moist, and unstable environment, prompting severe thunderstorms going into the mid-late afternoon hours. Colder rains up here into Iowa and southern Wisconsin. Rumbles of thunder possible there as well. And then as it cools off, we could see some snow showers up here towards Iowa, southeast Minnesota near Rochester, up there into the Rhinelander area in the north woods of Wisconsin, the western UP of Michigan. Also cold pocket aloft back here with our secondary low developing toward the Four Corners region of Colorado. Could start to see some snowfall overnight tonight. Then as we go into set a Friday morning on January 9th, first round of storms moving through portions of Mississippi and Alabama. Some of these could be strong, heavy rain producers, occasional cloud of ground lightning, some smaller hail in the morning. And then as we see going into the afternoon, we're just going to have a conveyor belt of moisture and this is going to bring the threat for more severe weather. This second round could produce the tornado threat here across Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. Something to keep an eye on there even overnight. So make sure to have multiple ways to receive severe weather watches and warnings. There's some more snow up into the Midwest, Wisconsin, Michigan there, including the UP. And then as we go into Saturday afternoon, we're going to see more of that snow moving across the Great Lakes, including some snow possible there for the wild card playoff game between the the Chicago Bears and the Green Bay Packers at Soldier Field. Make sure you're ready for snow out there and bundle up because it'll be a little bit chilly on Saturday. Here's the rainfall expected through Sunday evening on January 11, 2026. Notice we're in the orange up from the eastern portions of Tennessee, Smoky Mountains, Cumberland Plateau, back down here through the Dixie Alley of Mississippi, Alabama, North Georgia, and into the bayou of Louisiana. We could potentially be seeing two to four inches worth of rainfall and a resultant flash flooding threat here for today. Pockets of marginal flooding risks where heavier thunderstorms are possible. Tomorrow, there's a slight risk from the bayou area of Louisiana through parts of Mississippi, Alabama, North Georgia, getting up toward Chattanooga there in the Smoky Mountains of East Tennessee, Cumberland Plateau. Keeping an eye on that for a flooding threat as we go into the end of the week. By Saturday, flooding threat really just more in the Smoky Mountains vicinity with the hilly terrain and stuff like that. Just don't drive on flooded roadways. Never a good idea. On the cold side, like we mentioned, snow going to be moving through the Midwest. We get one shot of it tonight into Friday and then another one Friday night into Saturday here as that low kind of winds up. Doesn't look really that impressive, but maybe some snow. Here's the national blend of models showing a good general one to three, two to four inch snow event here in parts of eastern Wisconsin, northeast Illinois, northern and central lower Michigan, the UP of Michigan up here near the shoreline of Lake Superior. That's where we could see some enhancement to some of our totals over six to eight inches in some areas. Areas, and then a general two to four, three to five inch snow there in Ontario, Quebec northern main areas there um, as we go through Sunday evening. Wind is going to be a big issue with the strong low pressure system, especially the first one. We could be seeing winds over 30 to 40 miles per hour blowing here across the Ohio Valley and into New England, southeast Canada as well. So make sure you are ready for the gustier winds, especially if you're driving a more high profile vehicle, semi tractor trailer, cargo van, and east to west oriented roads. Definitely watch out for the winds. Here's the 500 millibar height anomaly. Simply put, the orange and yellow is high pressure and the low pressure is the blue and green. Notice we have high pressure in the east as we go through the rest of this week and into the weekend and that is a lot of warm air out ahead of our storms. That's just why we don't have a lot of snowfall. But look at these record breaking temperatures in the east potentially for early January standards. These are temperature anomalies in orange and red that are 55 degrees at max above normal. So that's what we see as we go into the weekend and that will continue. Maybe a cold shot of air with some storm induced cold behind it as we go into Sunday for January 11th across the east, but that's not really true Arctic air. The true Arctic air is up in Alaska. Now, another thing we have to watch is dense fog, right? If you're traveling as well, in addition to the wind, when you have warmer temperatures you're and you have the dew point temperatures elevated, those temperature and dew point temperatures get close together. That is where you get the relative humidity percentage higher, and that is what is going to lead to some dense fog. So watch out for that as we go into the afternoon up there toward the UP of Michigan and northern Wisconsin, and the development of some patchy dense fog across the southeast. You can see that into the low country of South Carolina, North Carolina. Carolina, Georgia, coastal Florida. We'll have to watch that into Friday morning and then maybe northern Minnesota up here as well. Watch out for some dense fog as we go towards Friday morning. Now let's look here at the orientation of the polar vortex. This is still at 500 millibars. This is your geopotential height map. 
This is for today. The main lobe of the polar vortex is over here in Asia. And notice as we go through the weekend, a lot of the core of the cold air is going to be over in Asia here and over in just north of Alaska, right? So that cold air source pretty far away. That's why we're seeing some warmer air, some cold air induced by our storm system as possible in the east once we get towards Sunday, like we mentioned. But then after that, once we get into next week, watch this feature here near Hudson Bay in Canada as the polar vortex starts to really come back. And I feel like we don't see that really until about week three of January. So around the 20th or so of January. So we got to be patient. But here is the 500 millibar height anomaly map again between Monday, January 12th and the following Monday, January 19th. You get a big ridge out here in the northwest United States, western Canada, and you get a trough in the east. This is a cold look for the east here. Now, it doesn't look cold here on the temperature anomaly map when you average out the seven days, but there will be some colder spells, especially especially the closer you get to the 19th of January, but it'll be a little bit warmer in Western Canada, Northwest US. That's where we're going to start to melt some snow. And then look here at the last week of January. This is the 24th through the 31st. That ridge gets stronger, spikes all the way up into Alaska and towards Scandinavia. And then you start to see a deepening trough in response downstream in the Northeast United States. Now that my friends is a cold look here for Southern Canada and especially the Northeast. East US where we could be much below normal here. This is a conservative look. There are other models that are much, much colder than this. So that is something to watch. I'm going conservative for now for the forecast. But looking here at that 12th through the 20th time frame of January, the snow prospects are going to be tied to clipper systems coming off the northwest flow across southern Canada and the upper Midwest. That could bring those nickel and dime snows, your one to three inches, your two to four inch snows. Not really big snow events, but the Great Lakes lake effect snow could be enhancing some totals here and then up into New England. I think more of the I-95 corridor, unfortunately, if you're a snow lover there near the coast, probably going to stay more rain than snow. But our fortunes change toward the last week of January as we get that deeper more true Arctic air that is going to suppress the storm track a little further south could bring us some bigger snowstorms into the Midwest the Great Lakes and the Northeast including the Ohio Valley and the I-95 corridor notices in more of the blue instead of the gray which is better chances for snow in the last week of January after the 24th of the month so thank you all for watching make sure to like share and subscribe to the YouTube channel you get nothing more accurate than on this channel so make sure to subscribe we cover the United States, the Canadian provinces of Canada and North America in general, also the tropics during tropical weather season. My spring forecast will be out later in February. So again, that's another reason to subscribe to the channel and just simply because we're less than 300 subscribers from 144,000. Again, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful, safe and warm rest of your Thursday out there.